on this two-part episode of Oz Off-Road TV, we are Birdsville bound and back as we head off to the Big Red Bash in Birdsville to celebrate 10 years of the world's most remote music festival. The challenge is getting there, the fun to be had, and we'll show you why you should jump in a four-wheel drive and head to Birdsville in July. Then later, we'll then take a run down the Birdsville track, check out the ghost town of Farina in South Australia, tackle the infamous four-wheel drive track called Sky Trek in the Flinders Ranges, enjoy a station stay at Wampini Station, and jump on a boat down the Murray River to McCabe Corner. This is The Duck, and you're watching Oz Off-Road TV. Very, very warm start of the day today. It's absolutely freezing, but mate, look, no better way to warm your hands up than holding on to this bottom of this jug. You just warm up a bit of milk here. I'm making lattes here, mate. If you want one with a light dust of cinnamon with minimum soy and all that stuff. Another cheese try latte. You're at the wrong joint, mate. We just do flat whites here, mate. What are you doing, George? Doesn't look like it's working. It's that cold. How was it in the trailer last night? It was cold and uncomfortable because somebody stole my uh, sleeping bag. And the time <laughs> I turned, I couldn't turn. I realised that she stole my big one. Uh, I, was I was very comfy. G'day folks, the duck here. Well, what about this spot? We are out of By Rock near Burke in Western New South Wales camp behind the Mulga Creek pub. We are Birdsville bound for the Big Red Bash. We're about to head up the Dowling track into Queensland. It won't end there though. We're going to go down the Birdsville track from there. We're going to go into the Flinders Ranges. We're going to check out the Murray River as well, McCabe's Corner. I've got my mate George from Dynamic Wilco who sorts out our wheels and tyres out for us at Oz Off Road. He's got his long-suffering wife Shelley along for the trip as well. Why don't you come for a run with us? Camping down on an old bush track A four-wheel drive, yeah, I like it like that The weekend comes and now it's time to go Oz Off Road Well, after waking up to a frosty morning behind the Mulga Creek pub at Byrock, it's time to head off on our Outback Adventure. With plenty of time up our sleeve before we need to get to Birdsville, we head towards Burke in Outback New South Wales as we make our way to the first of many dirt roads to come. And of course, I am talking about the Dowling Track. Yeah, George, you got a copy, mate? Yeah, mate. For, for today, mate, it's going to be a a cracking day. We'll just uh, grab a couple of extras here in Burke and head up the Dowling track, mate. You'll love it. Yeah, look, looking forward to it. It's a beautiful day today and uh, the sun's out. And hopefully we'll get some blood back into the hands. Blood in his hands? Gee, it sounds like George had a cold night with Shelley stealing his sleeping bag. After thawing out, it's time to top up some fuel as the road leads us north towards Queensland. We're about to get off the black top here, mate, and uh, hit the dirt. Your beauty. Normally in pretty good condition, this track, although I have been on it when it's been a bit wet, but uh, we'll see how we go. It changes over time. It goes for a couple of hundred k's to Hungerford from here. Yeah, at the moment it looks pretty good. It actually looks better than most roads in Sydney. <laughs> Certainly better than the roads where I live, mate. It's amazing just how good the condition of some of these dirt roads are in compared to some of the sealed roads around the place that have been really affected by big rain events. Take where we come from in the Hawkesbury, where in recent years we've been battered by floods and rain, which has resulted in potholes everywhere, road crews struggling to keep up with repairs, and everybody just driving around dodging holes all day. I'll tell you what's changed a bit out here since we were here last year, there's a lot more sealed sections. Oh, I might have uh, taken a bit of fun out of it, but I suppose for the locals living out here, mate, when it rains, they can't use the road. Yeah, that's a fair point, mate. 
I've driven the Dowling track many times over the last 10 years and each year there seems to be more sealed sections. I guess it won't be long until it's called the Dowling Road. Our first stop along the Dowling track is at Fords Bridge, about 70 kilometres west of Burke. Once a flourishing town, it had a butcher shop, post office, a school, even a racetrack. Not much goes on there these days though, with a population of about four people, but there is a small hotel there. Fords Bridge can lay claims though, to an association with Henry Lawson, who once lived and worked in the area. I reckon this is a good spot to pull up for a quick lunch stop. Geez, I tell you what, you've got to love this caravan and off-road lifestyle, don't you? There's not much stress out here. Although the road's in pretty good nick right now, it doesn't take much rain and a few vehicles to chop up a road like this very quickly. With many stations in this area relying on these roads for daily drives, you can understand why they need to be sealed. Might even entice a few more travellers up this way as well, but for us, we're just loving the long dirt road and wide open spaces. Here we are Georgie, just um, bobbing here down into Queensland mate. I hope the weather's warmer. Oh, I'm sure the temperature goes up a little bit as soon as you go through the gate here. <laughs> That's what I was hoping for, mate. I'll go grab me a bikini. Oh, please don't. Oh, bugger that, George. You're kidding, aren't you? You'll get us thrown out of the town. We're not even in there yet. Okay, George, here we go, mate. Into Queensland. Maybe not. They don't want us in here, George. Look. <laughs> it's automatic, but it's all the plates and shut. We've got someone that knows how to open the gate properly now. I can never do anything right. Ooh, it says pub on the left. Once a Cobb and Co station, the Royal Mail Hotel was granted its first licence in 1874, a year before Hungerford was even gazetted as a township. The town lies right on the border between Queensland and New South Wales on the east bank of the Peru River and was a customs post on important early stock route running between Queensland and the markets in Victoria and South Australia. These days though, the pub is a must-do stop-off to wash down some dust and to take in some fair digger Aussie history. After a quick one at the pub at Hungerford, we headed north about another 100 k's or so and decided to pull off the road and find a camp spot. With another six days of Queensland Outback adventure to come, we were keen to kick back by the fire and grab an early night. Little did we know though, our trip was about to get turned upside down and thrown out the window. For me, not much beats the Queensland Outback, and each morning is certainly pretty special. The sun rises that mirror the sunset from the night before, the sounds, the peaceful serenity. Places like this are what I regard as the real Australia. The camp spot we chose last night is right up there with them. Even my trusted mate Clancy, my blue cattle dog, he's just kicking back. He's on his first trip and he's just taking it all in. As beautiful as the start of this day has been, we've been hearing that a severe weather front is heading in the same direction as us, which could threaten our current trip plan to Birdsville for the bash and could even mean that we might not even be able to get there. It was time to call a good mate of mine who would be monitoring all of this information more than anyone. 
G'day, mate. How are you going? Yeah, good, good. That's good. Mate, how's life in Birdsville? Ah, oh, it's a beautiful day here today. It Quite is. Breeze, nice and sunny, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad where we are either, mate. We're probably about, I don't we're... know, 150 k's out of Thargaminda, I think. But, mate, we've been looking at this weather forecast. What do you think? What's, that? What's the latest? What's the latest? Well, we, it looks like we're um, possibly going to have a bit of rain on Wednesday. Well, the Bureau's got that at 90%, so it depends if, if it moves further south or comes further north. It will depend on how much rain we'll get. We're getting ready for Wednesday and seeing how that all plays out for a start. You know, it's just a matter of the lead up and uh, any rain that falls and the impacts that that might have, um, you know, to the festival site, but also to some of the surrounding roads. Well, we will plan to get there like Saturday, but so we best to head there just as quick as we can. I think you should uh, make plans to get here sooner rather than later. There'll be a fair bit more traffic coming around if that Birdsville track shuts from everyone coming from down south and west. We've already had a couple of communications out to all our ticket holders and basically said to them, uh, if you're not up the virtual track by probably today, um, you know, we, we expect it'll, based on rain forecasts, we expect it could well close from tomorrow. So a change of plans. Um, this rain that's coming could mean two things. One, the road could close between Batuta and Windora. That was Greg Donovan on the phone. Yeah. Um, which means we'd have to do about 170 k's long way around through Baduri, which is fine, it doesn't worry us, but yeah. what does worry me is the extra traffic, because he reckons the birds will track, if you're not on it by tomorrow, you won't get on it. Um, and they've obviously got their finger on the pulse with this weather stuff, so um, we'll get a lot more traffic. And not to mention, I think it's going to have a bit of a strain on the fuel and the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. Because all these cars that weren't yeah, normally going to go through Windor or in Quilby are going to be going through there fueling up, and yeah. um, and we've got commitments out there at the at the bash. We obviously have to get work commitments there. Yeah, yeah. We'll just head to Birdsville. Sounds like a plan. And we'll try and get into Birdsville tomorrow afternoon sometime. Yeah. Let's get ourselves yeah. sorted then, and we'll make a move, eh? With our planned trip notes torn up and thrown in the campfire, it's now a race against the rain to Birdsville. Certainly not what we wanted, but with radio commitments at the bash, plus the significance of the 10th anniversary of the event, we had little to no choice but to get cracking. It doesn't take a lot of rain to close the roads in this part of the world, and it's nothing to get stuck somewhere for days on end. We certainly don't want that. So Big Red, here we come. I'm tipping we won't be the only ones trying to beat the rain out there to Birdsville. Of a line up at fuel there at Windora. I reckon they're gonna they're gonna struggle with all those other cars coming around the long way. I reckon. Yeah, I reckon you're right, mate. It's uh, yeah, they're queuing up already. Yeah, well, I think a few people have been copping the tip that we've copped and getting it to Birdsville at least to beat the uh, the rain in case it does close the road. But the Birdsville track shut, mate. That's going to cause so many more full drives to come through here. Yeah, 100 percent, mate. It's going to be uh, they'll probably have big traffic jams or something, I guess. Anyhow, mate, we'll keep making a bit of a run here. We're only about 350 k's out of Birdsville now, so we, uh, we're going all right. Yep, you beauty can't wait to get there. They can't wait to have you there either, George. How 
big as the landscape out here, you're going up one hill and if you get to the top of that one and then you just look straight to the horizon, it's unbelievable. Yeah, the views are always good out here. Yeah, she's, uh, she's hot, dusty, but it's a bit of green, a bit green too, which is all right. As we head closer towards Birdsville, we are greeted by some spectacular scenery and landscapes with pools of water all about the place. It's amazing the effect a bit of water that fell previously has had on this raw outback landscape. It wasn't that long ago when everything out here was just red and dust, and with the sky looking a bit ordinary, it's looking like the weather forecast might be right and more water is on the way. Gee, couldn't they just get it wrong like they usually do? Well, after a couple of days on the road, we finally make it into Birdsville. Now, whether it's the Big Red Bash, the Birdsville races, a trip across the Simpson or a run up the Birdsville track, no matter what the reason is for heading to this famous Queensland outback town, everybody seems to do the same thing, and that's head straight to one of Australia's most iconic hotels, the Birdsville Pub, for a cold beer. Then, off to Australia's most famous pie shop, the Birdsville Bakery where you'll find not only fresh bread and all the other goodies that you'll find in a bakery, but also the famous camel pie. For a town located in hard outback country with a very small population, it's incredible just how many famous things are actually here. How's the mad rush out, Duck? Jeez, a lot of people have taken the tip. And how many people are camped on the side of the road up here? Well, the event's a week away. Yeah, so uh, anyway, we're here, mate. So we'll get some fuel, we'll load up a bit of water. We'll head out and uh, we'll be based at the bottom of Big Red for the next 10 days. How's your rock collection going? Yeah, good mate, good. Yeah. just trying to scatter it everywhere, a little bit on the roof, <laughs> on the back there. Plenty up on the camper. Yeah, I love what you've done with the camper, it looks great. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, you know, they say rock and wood, Yeah. good, good combination, Yeah. Camper. Absolutely. After filling up our water tanks, it's time to head out to the base of Big Red, the home of the Big Red Bash, and thanks to the weather forecast, it will also be our home for the next 10 days. You know, one of the positives of having to change our plans and arriving at the bash site early is seeing this place before the crowds get here and watching the build-up of what they call Bashville. Although I've been to this event many times, it's hard to believe that in just a few days it will look totally different with thousands of people rocking onto some of Australia's best music acts performing at this massive music event. This is certainly a special place right on the edge of the Simpson Desert and apart from what they call the Crew Village, where staff and volunteers live for a couple of weeks, we are the only ones here. Just thinking of the logistics to get all this done is enough to give a Panadol a headache. As the predicted rain starts to fall, everybody, including my dog Clancy, starts to worry. So as you know, we've had to get ourselves to Burzwald before the rain and we've made it just in time. She's just starting to come down here now. It's a bit surreal, not a lot of people here yet, but it's all going to be happening, but we're bunkering in and we're going to ride the rain out. How's your solar panel going? Yeah, good. I'm getting eight volts <laughs> on this beautiful sunny day. With constant rain that looks set in now falling, operations manager Steve Donovan makes the difficult decision to stop all work and vehicle movements on site, with machinery also making its way back to base camp. Hey, uh... <laughs> Every day starts with a very healthy breakfast. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> For us, 
we are now getting bored and we resort to entertaining ourselves around camp, hoping that the rain may clear tomorrow so things can get back on track. It's certainly not looking that good at the moment though. And just like that, someone turned the tap off through the night, a bit of sun peeked through and with the stage still to be built, toilets and other infrastructure far from in place, it was all hands back on deck with staff and volunteers working double time to get the festival back on track. With things looking better for now, I caught up with Greg Donovan for a chat to check on his stress levels and we decided to go for a drive around the Bashville Plaza while we still had it to ourselves. Well Greg, here we are mate, in the ram. What do you think? Coffee? Yeah. Mate, let's have a bit of a drive up the plaza. We're here just checking out the Big Red Bash before the Big Red Bash starts. For those of you that have been here before, what you're looking at now is where everything will be happening and in a few days time there'll be about 11 to 12,000 people all camped around here, walking around the plaza, enjoying it all, but this is a, like a calm before the storm, Greg, isn't it? That's right, yes. Yeah. Need the people in the vans. In the vans, I'll start rolling in tomorrow morning, they're rolling in a couple of days early. And what we're going to do here, we're going to chuck a bit of a left here and there's the whole concert area and up the end of that there's going to be the big stage which is they've started to build that yep. and there's Big Red, look at that. You know what we should do? What? Let's go up there. We, we don't have to ask permission of anyone. You're the boss here. No, no, we're right. We can, uh, we can skid Let's up go. there. All right, Greg, here we go. Big Red, let's yeah. get up there and have a look, eh? Yeah, here we go. Bouncy. All the beer in the back. <laughs> All right, here we go. Up the, the gin, mate. Sun now rise. What are we going here? Around up there. There's some people over here, mate. Yeah, a few up here. Taking well, mate, here we are, the top of Big Red. How yeah. good is it from up here? Yeah, it's a massive, uh, massive sand hill. Look at that view down there. It's beautiful, mate. Unbelievable, mate. In about, uh, this is your kingdom, <laughs> eh? My subjects. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are all your disciples <laughs> over here, and. Yeah. Mate, it's amazing. You're looking at it now, and in a few days' time, there'll be what 11,000 people in here. Yeah, yeah, it'll be and, there. The best part of like you know four and a half, five thousand cars and yeah. vans and everything else will be yeah. it'll be packed. There's 360 acres down there, of graded area, and it'll be pretty much uh, chock a block. It's unbelievable, mate, to think that any other day of the week this is just planes and there's nobody here and then you come out here <laughs> and your people and within two weeks they build a city. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And it's almost uh, as it's own Pascade, doesn't it? It's just about, or it's the second biggest city west of the Great Divide in Queensland, I believe. So. Yeah, it's quite but, incredible. Uh, for a week anyway. And, uh, you know, by, by the weekend after the bash, it'll be, you wouldn't even know to be in here. It's just, it's just surreal to be here this early. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. It's the calm before the storm. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully yeah. the storm's not going to be too yeah, bad. Yeah, hopefully we don't want a real storm. Just <laughs> no, no, uh, mate. Ten year anniversary. Well done yeah. on ten years. Yeah, thanks. Ten years. Who would have thought? No, yeah, oh, certainly not you. This is where we... John Williamson just down there. Yeah, is that uh, right? It's about where your car's parked. Yeah. Maybe back a bit further from Is that there. right? Yeah. Did everyone just sat up on here? Uh, they see this amphitheatre there. Yeah, Everybody yeah. sat around the amphitheatre. Is that right? And that's all it was. Unbelievable. And now yeah. it's this. And now it's like like this. Yeah, yes, that is it'll, incredible. It'll mate. The amount of people, the excitement's been building for weeks and weeks with these people. Some left over a month ago. Yep, yep. Uh, all to get here. Yeah, a lot of people, well, most people have been planning this trip for a year and some of them have been planning it for a few years. So, yeah. so it's, a big, yeah. uh, it's a big thing for people to get here. It's amazing what Greg and his family have achieved with this event, an event that literally started by accident. The hard work over 10 years that has gone from a couple of hundred people just kicking back listening to John Williamson after a desert marathon run to now being the most remote music festival anywhere in the world. After only light rain falling overnight, the decision was made to let the early bird ticket holders in even earlier, and it wasn't long until the first bash goers started arriving to set up camp. Although 
although work continued on building Bashville and people arriving on site, all eyes were still on the sky and the forecast. And with the rain comes road closures out in these parts, so we weren't out of the woods just yet. Well, here we are, another beautiful morning here at the Big Red Bash. Very unseasonal rain this time of year, which is why the event's normally held in July, because guess what? It never rains out here in July. But certainly not a little bit of that now. We do have unconfirmed reports just talking to uh, one of the AMBOs here, that all roads leading in and out of Birdsville are actually closed at the moment. So uh, if you're not here at the festival, you might struggle, but uh, I think just about everybody is in. Look, the event's still going to go ahead and everybody braves the elements where campers in the end of the day. But I've got to say, this is uh, something a little bit different. There's the uh, Crocs. Whoever bags Crocs ever again, well, have a think about it. Go get yourself a pair. After some housekeeping at our campsite, which had become a bit of a swamp, I thought I'd wander over and have a chat to some of the bash goers who had been lining up waiting for the merchandise tent to open. OK, I'm at the front of the line here. I've just pushed in here at the Big Red Bash merchandise stand. What's your name? Jenny. Jenny, what time did you start lining up? Oh, about 20 minutes ago. Is that all, 20 minutes <laughs> yep. ago? Yeah, OK, definitely. there were some people here about 5.30 yeah, waiting for it to there. open. Oh, what's, what's your name? Jacinta. Jacinta. And uh, how long have you been lining up here? Oh, same time as those guys. Yeah, 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Okay. And what are you going to buy in here? Oh, probably everything. Shirt, yeah. Mum's pain, so. Mum's pain. No. Oh, we'll get, <laughs> get. Well, you get two of everything. <laughs> Heading to the merch tent is one of the first things you do at the Big Red Bash. The gear is always high quality, very popular, and in fact, after 10 years, it's no surprise you bump into people wearing this stuff all year round. We're here at the cash registers at uh, the merch tent. What's your name? Denise. Denise, you're the first paying customer. Thank you. <laughs> How does that feel? Pretty good. You seen the line outside now? We were here at before six o'clock. Oh, I thought that was you out there before six o'clock. I can tell you the line's long enough to be continued now. You know, the one thing I've come to learn about campers and caravanners is that they brave the elements. Rain and cold doesn't bother them. So it's no wonder that everyone is in high spirits. Things are looking good now. Even the sun is poking its head out. Finally, we are underway. The weather is certainly kinder and everyone is ready for the 2023 Big Red Bash. Although we witnessed the creation of this thing as it happened, it's still hard to get a grip on how different this place was a week ago. When we arrived here, there was virtually nothing and nobody here. This year, Greg's son Steve put on another event within the event called Big Blue Day where people were encouraged to buy blue wigs, form a map of Australia in the concert area and have John Williamson sing his iconic song, True Blue, for all the participants to raise money and awareness for juvenile diabetes. This was in light of Greg's son Stephen being diagnosed with the disease whilst in his teens. Wow, look at that. John, you were here 10 years ago. Would you have ever thought when you were on top of that June that you'd be back in front of thousands of people doing that? <laughs> yeah, that's a very special memory, Duck. Yeah, that's, uh, it was quite intimate then compared to now, but it's, well, I'm proud of the fact that it has got so big and it's now entertaining and raising a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. I think it's fair to say you're basically the, you're the artist of the event because uh, no matter who comes after you, you were the first. No, a very proud moment for, for, to be there for me. You've never done a bad job, mate. Good on you, John, and it's great to uh, meet you here for the 10-year anniversary. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for being here. Good on you, mate. So backstage with a, uh, a crowd favourite here, Troy Casadali. Troy, how are you, son? I'm good, Duck. Mate, you're going to see a bit of a difference here because you've played, is this your third time here at the Bash? Yeah, this is my third 
I think maybe my fourth. Mate, to play in a venue like this and to look out across at the base of Big Red, across the desert, as an artist, it must be something special. Flying out here last night, looking at the country again, haven't been here for a couple of years, um, I had this one song that I thought was set in stone that I'd started to write, yep. and I changed every lyric in the plane on my way out here because of the look of this country. Yep. And that's the way that this, that's the power of it, you know? Yeah. Mate, I think it's great. I think the fact that uh, that we've still got some country music here at the event, which I think is fantastic. Well, I'm glad they included a bit of that. I mean, we always feel like we're a part of the country when we mm. come out here. And John and I have been playing these these parts of the world for a long time. I don't like going on after people like John. <laughs> it mm. makes me feel nervous. Yeah, yeah true. Like He's going, legendary. Like yeah. going to bat after Bradman. That's right. After he gets that's you. That's right. There are also many other traditions and events held within the Big Red Bash event itself, such as Frank Fraser, the bloke who wakes everyone up at dawn with his bagpipe performance up on the top of Big Red, and the drag race that helps raise funds for the Royal Flying Doctor Service. Gee, I'm no George Clooney, but some of these blokes actually improve their looks. Well done boys, good old fashioned fun for a very worthy cause. Big Red Bash edition of the Camping and Off-Road Radio Show broadcasting from Birdsville out here through Nine Radio right across Australia. And of course there is the Nutbush record attempt held at Birdsville, again raising money for the Royal Flying Doctor Service. Take your hats off, folks. This year, you tipped in $89,000 towards $170,000 raised over the entire bash event. Geez, you've got to be happy with that. From a very humble beginning, the Big Red Bash is now a bucket list event that not only supports Australian artists and charities, but provides all caravanners and campers a reason to see Australia and experience outback travel. Just getting to and from this event is an experience all on its own. It's because of events like this, we formed Oz Off-Road where we can help people get set up for outback travel so you too can enjoy what we call the Oz Off-Road lifestyle.
Well, George, have one last look at Big Red, mate, considering we've looked at it every day for about 10 days. We're uh, finally on the move, mate. Uh, I've got to tell you, I'm very glad. Yeah, I love the Big Red Bash, but we had to get in early because of that weather, but I, uh, I'm glad we're back on the road again, mate. Yeah, mate, 100% agree with that one. Bye-bye, Big Red. <laughs> Thanks for having us. We'll get out of here, get ourselves into Burzel and down the Burzel track and on our way to the Flinders Ranges, eh? Yeah, mate, looking forward to hitting the road again. Mate, might be a bit wet down there. Yeah, mate, uh, we've anticipated that and uh, got some extra cover on the camper to cover the chairs, etc. <laughs> I don't care about your chair being wet. <laughs> I'll just sit on your chair. Coming up on part two, our Birdsville Bound and Back episode continues as we head on down the Birdsville track that reopened just in time after the rain and the Big Red Bash. We check out the South Australian ghost town of Farina, tackle Sky Trek in the Flinders Ranges, put a station stay on your bucket list and go for a boat ride to McCabe Corner on the River Murray. We have that and a whole lot more to come on upcoming episodes of Oz Off Road TV. Be sure to subscribe to the Oz Off Road TV YouTube channel and remember, your adventure starts when you turn the key in the ignition. So if you need to get your four-wheel drive adventure ready or you're looking for your very own off-road caravan, check us out online at ozoffroad.com.au and we'll see you out there. Now it's time to go. How's our road? It's time for the show.